This is a video series on the Compose Runtime. We will look at the internals and the architecture. We will look at the basic operations that could be performed with the slot table and its API. We will look at what happens underneath the hood during initial composition and also during recompositions. Let's first motivate the purpose. So what's the benefit of understanding the internals? The benefit is that you could learn how to build libraries on top of it to tap into Compose. There's a difference between Compose Runtime and Compose UI. Compose UI is a library that's built on top of the core Compose Runtime. And Compose underneath the hood is just the library that knows how to manage your tree of nodes. What these nodes are could be anything. It all depends on the context. Let's look at libraries that are built on top of Compose. Here's an example of a library called Molecule. Molecule is a library that has nothing to do with UI, but it's a library that allows you to build state streams. So it allows you to build a state flows like this, launch Molecule as an extension provided by the library, and all the business logic is stored in the model's composable method. Whenever that gets recomposed, it pushes to that state flow. So here's an example of a library utilizing the core Compose architecture. There are other libraries. For example, you could use Mosaic to build terminal apps with Compose. You could also use it for server-side rendering, and there are examples in the open source ecosystem with this. There's a really nice article written by Jake that talks about the history and the difference between the nomenclature of Compose and Compose UI. So the other benefit, it allows you to learn about the internal workings that's beneficial to when you're debugging performance issues, for example. So how is the Compose source code structured? Well, there is a library called the Android Open Source Project, and it contains all of the components that are part of the runtime, such as the composer, recomposer, snapshots. We we'll look at what each of these things are. But there's also another piece of it, which is in the Kotlin repo. It's the Compose Compiler plugin, which is different. Its job is to transform your composable functions to be able to hook into these components. For example, the composer. It generates code to be able to tell the composer to create, for example, a restart group. We'll look at how that works in this video series. If you take a step back and look at things from a 10,000 feet, You'll see Compose has this architecture. This is the runtime architecture. Each of these things are responsible for something. And they're all working together during initial composition or recompositions. This is a library that also allows you to hook into it through an entry point in the composition object. We'll look at the common way libraries hook into it by setting up Compose. At the most basic level of this architecture, you have the slot table, where information is stored about groups. The slot table right now, in production, the slot table is utilizes an implementation called the gap buffer. However, the Compose compiler Compose team is working on improvements, performance improvements, and they opened up this PR, which did benchmarks. Benchmarks are different implementations of the slot table. These were the implementations that they uh, experimented with. And one of the implementations that looked promising was implementing a slot table as a link table. And in this video series, I'll look at what's in this PR and how this implementation works. So this is a sneak peek into something that's in the works. This hasn't been merged yet. It's a work in progress. Let's start with the basic concept. Let's start by defining our terms. So what is a group? So slot table stores groups. And the word group is synonymous with the word node. Each node in this tree is a group. And our goals in the slot table is to be able to track relationships between these groups. We want to know and track information such as what's the parent and what's the child. A parent could have any number of children, but there's always a root node in here, the root parent. We also want to be able to track any dependencies, any state. For example, a group can store, for example, primitive values, but it can also store reference values. And we'll look at how that information is tracked. So for example, you could have a string value like this, a state like value like this, and you could have just certain number of nodes that are dependent on it. 
we'll look at in recompositions how we traverse this tree to be able to update these nodes. So the slot table internally has a builder that allows that allows you to build a specific slot table with groups. And the builder looks like this. This is an internal API that's not accessible to you. So this builder right here builds, for example, a page, a page that you would see, for example, in a book in a table of contents where you have offsets, one, two, three, four, and all you have 64 slots by default. So in here, I could add groups in each of these slots. When it gets filled up, I get a new page. So how do you go about creating group? Here's a simple example of a group. I'm using the method start group and end group, and I have a key value as 37. When I build a slot table for this, it looks like this. I get a page of 64 slots, and the first slot pay offset zero, it creates a group in there with the key of 37. What we'll look at in this video series is how to build upon this idea and how during initial composition, it takes this information in this simple example and it creates, for example, all the groups for it. And when during initial composition, the end result looks like this. Here are the groups that get created and the reference values, the recomposition scope that it stores, each group stores. We'll look at what this means and how in the end, all the flow and the process during which the Compose goes through to create this. So these are the three things we'll look at. Architecture, how this new implementation works and recomposition. So join me to in this video series. If you want to learn more about coroutines, Compose, check out my website, codingwithmohit.com.